Today let's talk about latency within the LV1 system, what could possibly be more fun. On the Waves homepage you can read that 32-bit floating point mix engine with latency as low as 0.8 milliseconds. And if we check the buffer size we can see that it also says 0.8 milliseconds of latency. So it would be quite easy to assume that the latency in the system is 0.8 milliseconds, but uh, it's not. So let's go through all of this. I will show you how it actually works. We will do some measurements and I will give you a few tips and tricks of how to get the most out of the system. All right, so first of all, the 0.8 milliseconds of latency that Waves are talking about is the processing time within the server. But then you of course need to get in and out of the system as well, and that takes some time. So uh, let's do some measurements. And actually, first of all, let's go through all of the settings. So on the uh, network buffer size, I have the fastest one, the 0.8 we use uh, 96 kilohertz in the sample rate. I also have the uh, latency optimized mix engine performance. And then also I align everything by mix bus slash delay group. So with smart, I have two reference or rather one reference signal that goes out uh, two outputs from my sound card. One is going straight back into the sound card and one is going into the uh, ionic box being processed and then out from the ionic box and into the, the external sound card. And then we can measure the difference between the two uh, signals. So uh, let's do a measurement here. And we can see that the, the difference between the, the two signals is one millisecond. So the time it takes for the signal to go in to the ionic box being processed and come back out again is actually one millisecond. And this is the fastest time I've been able to reach within all of this. If we were to change the sample rate to say 48 kilohertz, and let's do a new measurement. And now we have 1.23 milliseconds of latency uh, round trip within the LV1 software. If we increase the buffer size, of course, this will increase the latency as well. So now we are at 48 kilohertz with a buffer size of 1.2 milliseconds. And then the total round trip latency is 1.56 milliseconds. So let's actually get back to uh, the uh, 0.8 and let's change this to 96 uh, so that from now on we will have the, the, the one millisecond latency within the system and let's just do another measurement to confirm. Yes, we are at 1.0 milliseconds. And actually what we were looking at right now is the uh, signal coming in on channel one and then going direct out. But let's see what happens if we go in on channel one. We send this channel to the group one. We send the group one to aux 16. We send aux 16 to left right and then we send left right to the matrix one and then just patch this output instead of going direct out let's go from matrix one to 14. So now instead we're going through all of these steps and let's make a measurement and we should get the exact same result. Yeah, it's still one millisecond. So uh, it doesn't matter how you get from the input to the output, the, the latency is uh, still the same. But uh, it doesn't stop here. It, there are more things to uh, consider with all of this. So uh, one of them is of course plugins. 
So let's leave this going into channel one and then to group to aux to left right to matrix and let's have a look at some plugins. And the easiest way to keep track of all of this is to use uh, delay groups. So I've set up one delay group for the uh, PA, so output 14. Then we will have a look at some other stuff and I will use another delay group for mo monitors coming out of uh, output one. So let's actually, uh, let's do like this so we can see everything all at once. All right, so now we can see that on the PA uh, delay group, there are no latency, but there are of course the one millisecond latency within the system. So it's kind of mi misguiding, but there are no extra latency. So if we add a plugin that we know will cause some extra latency, uh, for instance, the tracked linear phase plugin, we can see that now on this delay group, we have 5.41 milliseconds of added latency because of this plugin. So far, so good. Some plugins add latency, some don't. But say we have a big project where we need some extra uh, server power. So let's add an extra server here. And on this channel one, Let's say that we want to use this on server B instead of server A in order to, to save power on server A. So we are at uh, 5.41 milliseconds of latency. And if we switch this one to B, and all of a sudden we see that we have 6.74 milliseconds of latency. And the reason is that it's kind of like having the signal go out and back in again when you are going uh, through the B server. So uh, as long as you stay within the A server, uh, you will only have the, the latency that the plugin actually generates. As soon as you go to the B server, you will have all of that plus 1.33 milliseconds, I think it is. Let's actually, uh, let's disable this one. Yeah, uh, now we have 1.33 seconds of latency because we are using the B server for this uh, channel. Switching this back to A, we will get back to zero again. So if we have something more normal, so let's say, because you, you wouldn't really use the uh, tracked uh, EQ on a channel. So let's add a SSL channel strip on the channel this going into a group with say some, uh, we need some uh, compression. So let's go for something like the uh, DBX 160 and then you probably want some EQ. So let's go for some, uh, I don't know, some uh, Putec, why not? This going for some reason into the aux with some additional, uh, Let's have some uh, some magma stuff. And then this go to the left right where you will, of course, have the uh, SSL bus compressor and this feeds to the left right with there. It might make sense to use the track DQ. So with all of these uh, plugins, we now have a total of uh, 2.82 milliseconds of latency plus the one millisecond uh, within the system. So the total is almost four mil milliseconds from the input to the output. And if we were to use the, the B server as well, the total latency is well over five milliseconds of latency. And on a PA system, five mil milliseconds of latency is probably just fine. With in airs, we are really close to a problematic amount of latency, but there are ways to work around this. So the easiest way uh, in order to uh, not have as much latency in the in airs would be to split the input uh, channels. So here we have uh, another channel using the same input. So this channel we will go only to the in-ears, in this case the uh, monitor one. 
this channel is using the same input, but uh, this one is going only to the to the PA. This channel, or rather this uh, monitor, is using the uh, output one, and the the PA matrix is using output fourteen. And we can see that uh, here we have the the PA delay group on for for the output fourteen and the monitor for output. I've also added a reverb because I will show a thing uh, later on. So right now the PA uh, plug-in latency is uh, 2.82 milliseconds, but the, the latency for the auxes are uh, none at this point because we don't have any plugins. So one way would, would, would be to use the Emo plugins on the monitor side of things. You can also, of course, use the CLA stuff, and there are a lot of uh, zero latency uh, plugins. So as long as you use only the low latency plugins for the monitors, you will get around the extra latency added with all of all of these uh, stuff. Uh, one thing to remember is that if you are going to have any effects in the uh, in the monitors, let's add a. Reverb. Let's go for the just an H verb. So it's important to have a dedicated uh, reverb for just the the monitors. So let's uh, send uh, this signal now. Here we are. Here we are. Let's send this channel one to the effect two, uh, and now we have the effect two only for monitors effect one is going to the PA. Because now we can send the H verb that does not add any any latency. We can send this one to the uh, monitor one and still have uh, zero uh, milliseconds. If we were to send uh, this reverb that goes to the PA, as soon as we send this, we add uh, 0.72 milliseconds of latency the whole monitor system will get that latency. So, uh, and we, we can't just turn the fader down, we have to uh, turn off uh, the, the send, and as soon as we do that, we are back to having zero latency on the monitor side of things. But it's also important to remember to use uh, server A for all of the things that are going to monitors because if we say that we are going to use this effect on server B instead then we will add the 1.33 latency uh, because of the round trip to server B. A better way would be to uh, have this on A and use the channels going to the PA for server B instead. And if you don't want to split the, the channels, but use the same uh, channels for both uh, monitors and uh, front of house, uh, you can absolutely do that. And uh, let's see, let's have uh, this channel one that, that are now just going to the front of house. Let's send this to the uh, to monitor one. Let's do like, uh, nope, here we go not the effect, just the, the channel. And now you can see that we added uh, 0.21 milliseconds of latency and that's because of the, the plugin, that the, this is not a zero latency plugin. So we, we could live with the 0.21 milliseconds of latency or we could change this to something like the chips on the channel that don't add any uh, any latency and have basically the same thing as the uh, SSL channel. Now, since we are sending uh, channel one directly to the monitors without going through all of the, the groups and, and all of that stuff, we don't uh, inherit the, the latency f f from the plugins for the, the groups and the, and the left right. So you can still use plugins that add a bit of latency uh, on, on, the, on the groups, on the left, right, on the matrix, 
but still get away with sending the channel directly to uh, monitors since the the channel processing don't add any latency. I hope this all makes sense. And again, if you have a, a big project and need to run a, a second server, uh, still still use uh, the the channels on server A, and then instead use uh, something like the the group on uh, server B. So let's change this to server B. For mo monitors, we still have the zero latency, but the the PA we've added uh, 1.33 because uh, we are the the group is going back and forth to the B server. All right, if you are still awake after all of this, there are actually one more thing to consider with, with all of this. So I see the routing as kind of layers. So first of all, you have all the channels, then you have the groups, then you have the axis, then you have the left, right, and then you have the matrix. Now, what I thought with my kind of analog way of thinking uh, is, uh, if I were to use a B server, uh, then I can use uh, the channels for the A server, and then after that go to the B server and have all of the processing for uh, groups, axes, uh, left, right, and matrices on the B server, and then kind of go back and out. And, and, and then I just have to do one round trip to the B server adding 1.33 milliseconds of, of latency. But sadly, that's not how it works. So the way it works is like this. Uh, right now, everything is on the A server. And uh, on the PA, we have 2.61 milliseconds of latency. So let's add the group to the B server adding 1.33 milliseconds. The group is then sent to the uh, aux, so let's set the aux to the B server. Now we've added additionally uh, 1.33, then the aux is sent to the left right, so if the left right is on the B server, we add even more latency and the left right is sent to the matrix and well you see where this is going. Now we are at almost 8 milliseconds of latency because with all of these steps the group is sending to the B server but then gets back to the A server and then the uh, the aux is sending to the B going back to the A. So, so with all of, of these layers, channels, groups, auxes, left, right, matrices, uh, the signal is kind of going back and forth uh, between the A and, and, the, and the B server. So we add latency with all of these uh, steps. So the way I uh, most of the time do it is that I take all of my group processing on the B server and if needed, the uh, effects uh, as well. Uh, then th there is uh, at the most two times going back and forth to, uh, between the A and the, the B server. Uh, but even that will add 2.66 milliseconds of latency. So, so that's probably fine for, for the, the PA, but I don't want to do more than, uh, than that. All right, so to sum up, uh, you can't really get a lower round trip latency than one millisecond. And that is if you use uh, the, the lowest buffer size and using 96K. The other thing is that if you are using the B server, you will add latency. So uh, be wise to what you are putting on the B server and also use delay groups. It's a great way to keep track of, of the latency for each of the outputs. That's latency. I need some coffee. Let me know if you have any questions. <laughs>